This week was a heck of a week to be a Linux enthusiast. We'll talk about the major XZ backdoor and how it affects the Steam Deck. Spoiler, it doesn't. Plus, we'll drill into the numbers from the March Steam Hardware Survey. And we're gonna touch on the new 3DS emulator that's definitely not Citra. All of this and more today. Let's get right into the news. Okay, so first off, let's talk about this. Battlefield 5 is now broken for a significant fraction of its player base, and it's all Electronic Arts doing. A few months back, Electronic Arts issued a press release titled EA Anichi and Battlefield, where they straight up lied to their community. Quote, when we transition over to EA Anichi, you won't notice anything different when logging in and playing, but this transition will enable our teams to be better equipped to find and remove players that don't play fair. The lie was, for many of their players, this worthless change of anti-cheat solutions was noticeable. And seeing as Battlefield 5 is now completely unplayable for Steam Deck users and other Linux gamers, well, they should have known that what they were saying was completely untrue and they need to be called out for it. Yet one more reason to never buy an Electronic Arts game. Don't get me wrong, as stewards of multiplayer games, they do have a responsibility to root out cheaters and punish them and ban them and whatever but they also have a responsibility to the people who have already bought their game. And if you bought Battlefield through Steam and they've done this and essentially rendered your purchase moot, well, then you deserve a, a refund as far as I'm concerned. All right, the March Steam hardware survey was released this week and the numbers are once again, quite interesting, but let's have a quick refresher on February's numbers. In February, we saw a huge jump in the number of simplified Chinese users, and that skewed the results in favor of Windows 10. Relative Linux market share dropped from 1.95% in January to 1.76 in February. Flash forward to March, and Linux has risen back to 1.94, just one hundredth of a percentage point off from where it was in January. What's fascinating though, is looking at the Linux numbers where the infusion of simplified Chinese users skewed the relative numbers in the overall metrics, Linux metrics continued their trend undeterred. SteamOS Hollow was the number one Linux distro at 42% in January, and in February it became 43%. Then in March, it jumped to 44.2%. With Arch Linux growing from 7.6 to 8.15 in February, and then falling to 7.66 in March, if my estimations are correct, that puts us well over 2 million and possibly even 3 million Steam Deck users. And we can clearly see that SteamOS is the number one most popular gaming distro. I would be interested to see how these distros break down. Do distros like Chimera OS and Bazite uh, report as SteamOS or are they consolidated into other? I'd love to hear Valve's take on this, uh, but let me know your thoughts on this breakdown in the comments. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you wanna see more videos just like this. And if you're not into the whole algorithm game, then you can head over to subscribe to.me. It's my streaming site where you can watch videos just like these on your own terms. You can subscribe to my channel over there through your favorite Fediverse client, Mastodon, PixelFed, and PeerTube, just to name a few. Uh, you can also follow me on Mastodon. Uh, there's gonna be links below to all of this. And I want to thank everyone who supports this show. If it's you for watching, or maybe you're a supporter on Patreon, Coffee, or as a YouTube member, I, I wouldn't be able to run this site without you guys, and I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you. So thank you. All right, next story. So this week, Humble launched their Spring Screams bundle, and it's got a few spicy horror experiences. Now you can get eight games for just $17, and these titles include Amnesia the Bunker, which is verified, My Friendly Neighborhood, which is verified, the Quarry, which is unsupported, but ProtonDB ranks it as Platinum. Ad Infinitum, which is playable. Escape the Backrooms, which is playable. Devour, which is verified. Demonologist, which is playable. And Forewarned, which is unsupported on Steam, but ProtonDB lists it as Gold. Now, the title that I'm most interested in has got to be My Friendly Neighborhood, since I'm a bit of a Muppets fan, and this looks like it's right up my alley. As always, purchasing this or any other bundle with my affiliate link below helps charity, but it also helps this channel at no additional cost to you. And if you use my links, thank you. All right, Citra is back from the dead and all is right in the universe. Last month, Nintendo declared war on Yuzu. They cast Fireball and Citra took critical damage. Both Yuzu and Citra were removed from GitHub and the creator of both emulators closed up shop. 
Well, Lemonade is here with their second release. It's a fork of Citra, but they won't tell you that because they're looking for a clean break uh, so that they don't get delisted. And I think that's a good idea. In this latest release, they've completed their rebrand of the emulator. They've added a performance fix for Luigi's Mansion 2 added Android specific performance fixes and upgraded to the GPL 3.0 license. I'm interested to see how Lemonade develops over time. Hopefully they're able to further develop their emulator and differentiate it with improved performance, compatibility and features. And hopefully Emudeck will add support for it soon. So after someone uploaded a malicious crypto wallet to Snapcraft a few weeks ago, it seems the alternative platform Flathub has made some changes. Now, if you don't know what Flathub is, it's where the Discover Store on Steam Deck gets its software from by default. Now, developers have been able to get their apps verified on Flathub, which signifies that the flat pack comes directly from the project themselves. Verified apps get a cute little verified tick next to the name of their app, but now Flathub is actually going a step further. Their website is now prominently displaying an unverified badge next to an application's name. At the moment, neither the verified badge nor this new unverified one are listed anywhere in the Discover Store. Hopefully someone will implement this feature soon as I think it's sorely needed to build trust. And speaking of trust, the XZ backdoor was the big news this week. Now I could have jumped on the story and made a video about it and, and then got in on all the views and media hype, but this is kind of how I work. I like to hang back and see what information actually develops after the frenzy dies down. Now, if you live in the Linux world, you probably have already heard about this, but for those of you who are not in the know, the short version of the story is as follows. XZUtils is a software package that enables compression and decompression on pretty much every single Linux distribution, including SteamOS. It's used all over the place, including with SSH connections. Now, if you don't know what SSH is, it's what enables you to securely log into a machine remotely over a network, including the internet. You can get access to the terminal or even do display server forwarding. That's getting into the weeds, so let's move on. Well, a few years ago, someone going by the name Gia Tan uh, went to the XZ forum and started leaving negging and abusive comments towards the XZ's maintainer. After what seems like a coordinated attack from multiple users on the forum, Gia Tan convinced XZ's maintainer to let him help with the project. And for years, Gia Tan made substantive, useful changes to XZ. And this person was in for the long con, it seems. So years down the line, we're talking two years at this point, Gia Tan introduces some heavily obfuscated code hidden in what appeared to be test files in the code base. This obfuscated code would essentially let anyone with Gia Tan's private key log into any machine running the compromised code as the root user of that machine. And keep in mind, XZ is installed on every Linux distribution out there. So if this backdoor hadn't been discovered when it was, it would have been possible for anyone using Giatan's private key to log into any Linux server at a certain point in the future. Now, the technical aspects here are less interesting to me because honestly, I think the social engineering is the real issue here. See, Giatan spent years building trust to sneak his backdoor into a foundational package for Linux distributions. He used abusive comments, and some are even speculating sock puppet accounts to coordinate the sophisticated psychological campaign against the maintainer of a free software project. Now, I haven't mentioned the XZ maintainer's name because honestly, I don't think he did anything wrong. He's a victim here, and I don't want any hate or any more abuse going his way, especially not because of one of my videos. Again, he's a victim here, and he did nothing wrong. He has reported some mental health issues in the past, and Giatan exploited them with negging, abuse and manipulation. And from my perspective, this story means that it's no longer hypothetical. This is real concrete evidence which shows abusive comments are a real and valid security threat. And it's time that we take that threat seriously. Now, how does this relate to the Steam Deck? Well, the Steam Deck runs Linux and I've had a few somewhat panicked comments asking me about this and how this affects the Steam Deck. And the short answer is, it honestly doesn't. If you're running SteamOS on your deck, then you are not affected by this. And as of right now, there's nothing that you need to do. The version of XZ running on your deck should be version 5.4.3. And that version has no known vulnerabilities. Now, if you've installed a different distro on your uh, Steam Deck, if it was an unstable testing release of Fedora or uh, Debian, then you might have to do something. But if you've done that, then you probably already know how to address this issue on your own. 
Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this story or any of the others that we've talked about in this video. So feed the engagement algorithm and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Now, make sure you check out the, my next video here, or you can also watch my D&D campaign where I'm playing with my family over here. That's gonna do it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.